know how this looks a year from now. I know how this looks three years down the line. So y'all, sister was woo, struggling. I had a little breakdown in the car, I'm not gonna lie. Luckily, I had my dark shades, like I'm talking about blackout shades. What's up y'all, it's your girl Nia Olivia and I'm here with another video. Now y'all, this video right here, mm, is right on time for me, okay? Because earlier today, I had a serious moment. And tell me, have y'all, or do you guys experience this? Like, I have been on this real positivity tip, right? Like, I've been feeling so good about things that I've been doing in my life, positive changes that I've been making to create this life that, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna love, right? But also loving where I am right now, which is a, still a challenge for me, I'm not gonna lie. Today, I went through that challenge, right? I literally went into this whole kind of like just negativity thing. I was at my mom's house and I was having an issue with something and it's almost like it, it kind of just spiraled for me. So I was like, let me leave here. I get up to Kroger because I had to buy some groceries and I had a little breakdown in the car, I'm not gonna lie. Luckily, I had my dark shades, like I'm talking about blackout shades that I could still put on, go in there. And I was also listening to a sermon um, while I was in Kroger, which really, really, really helped to turn my mind around, um, just turn my mood around. But really it was my mind, my mood, my heart, like it, it impacted me in all of those ways. The whole thing is that this idea of building the life you love, you know how like you watch stuff and it's like exciting, like creating this you're, you're doing all these amazing things. You're taking all these great steps. But to be honest, building a life that you love, it hurts. Like, it hurts. It hurts a lot too, I think, when you're in the middle of it, which is where I think that I am, you know? I'm not like in my beginning phase, but I'm in the middle. And in the middle is like the wave. The, the waves are coming in. I'm getting a little seasick, just, just a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm feeling a little bit seasick. So anyway, that's what made me decide to do this video because I wanted to share with you all some of the things that I've learned since I've embarked on this journey, some of the challenges that I faced during the journey, and what to look for next. Like what is, you know, like still to come um, and building this life that I love. So the first thing that kind of like comes to mind for me is that you really have to envision, manifest, believe that this life is possible. And again, as I told you all, there are certain things that I struggle with. And one of those things is truly believing that the things that I want for my life, that all of them can come to me. Like sometimes I'll look and I'll think, you know what, I know like this could definitely happen. Like I, I see that happening. But there's other things where my faith is just not where it needs to be. And so it's a, it's a, constant, it's a constant battle within myself. My first thing is that you want to envision this life, right? I'm big on vision boards. I love my vision board. I look at it. You can make a vision board however you choose to make it. Sometimes we think, oh, we have to create our vision board at the beginning of the year. And if you didn't create it at the beginning of the year, it's too late to do it. It's absolutely not too late to create a vision board for your life, right? You can create a vision board for the rest of this year. You could create a vision board that's for the next three years. However you want to do that, it's good to have it though. I have it in my bedroom. I reflect on it all the time. And it reminds me, especially during these challenging times, like today, okay? Because when I tell y'all, a sister was woo, struggling. And so being able to look at that, also making a list of all of the things that you want to bring to your life. I have a list of probably like 75 things. Yeah, I know it's a long list, okay? But I saw some video on Instagram about that. And I was like, you know what? My friend sent it to me and I was like, okay, I'm gonna actually do this. So that's something else that I, I reflect on. So my first thing is like envisioning the life. The other thing when it comes to also envisioning is knowing why you're making the decision to change your life. The One of the main reasons why I decided to change, I'll, I'll just use one example, which is like work, right? I was in a very toxic work environment. I worked as an educator for like the past six to seven years and I was completely drained, just totally drained. 
and I felt so stressed out all the time. Like literally y'all, my heart, I was starting to feel like, like I was having chest pains or something. I was getting like a twitch in my eye from time to time. Um, there was just, it was starting to go from not just being a mental thing, but physically affecting me where I knew, okay, it's time for me to leave this job. I'm not happy doing this anymore. First of all, I'm commuting too far for work, which was like two and a half hours and waking up at five something in the morning, not getting home until four, five, five thirty-six. It just was too much. So one of the best decisions that I ever made was to move away from that job. But I couldn't do that until I had the vision of, I see myself working at home. I see myself in corporate America. I see my office set up. I saw those things. I had those things on my vision board. And it took time for them to happen too. It wasn't like it was just like that. Like literally guys, I applied to jobs, I think six months, something like that. It was a while. Like it was definitely a while because when I left the school, it was like in May, I did not start working full time again until January of 2023. So I think one of the things is when you're building the life you love, things just don't go as you hope, as you planned, as you prayed for. Like stuff happens in different ways, but it still can be beneficial. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. That way you'll be notified whenever I'm posting new content. So the next thing is, okay, you've envisioned your life, but now what? It's time for you to take the risk. It's time for you to take the steps. So y'all, when I say I was so scared to leave education, so scared to leave a reliable paycheck, a good 401k, like benefits. I know people always try to talk about how teachers don't have money and stuff, but I had been working in education for a while and I was making money. So I, I just think, I'm not saying it was great money, but I'm saying I was making money. And it was better than being in a position where I don't have a job or I don't know where my next check or anything like that is coming. It was a very stable, safe situation for me. And so that's one of the biggest things. You might be in a job now and you're like, this is safe, this is stable. I know how this looks a year from now. I know how this looks three years down the line. So you don't wanna take the leap to try something else that could actually be so much better for you and make you so much more happy. So I'm thankful that I finally was just like, you know what, I didn't re-sign a contract for the next year. I removed teaching as an option for me. I said, that's not an option for a full-time position for me. I don't want that in my life. I love children, but everything else that comes with it just doesn't, it doesn't work for me. And especially if something's starting to impede your health, obviously that's not something that you're gonna be able to, um, to stick with. So the first thing was I made the decision to take the risk. The other thing was when you make a decision to take such a drastic risk, like leaving a career and then looking for another one, you have to have a plan in place. And not just one plan, but like you need three, four plans. Because the first plan may not even work out how you think it is. Like I thought, oh, I'm gonna get a job in the summertime. This will be nothing. I'll still be getting my checks at the school. Then I'm gonna have another source of income. But it took a lot longer than I thought. And as I was applying to jobs, I started realizing, hey, this is not something that I really wanna do. I went into, I did an instructional design and e-learning program. So one tip to me is if you do decide to make a drastic change when it comes to work or something like that, figure out, get some more education, get a mentor, join some type of program so that you can prepare yourself so that you're just not out there cold turkey because there are so many people that are competing for these jobs now. It's scurry, okay? Scurry out there. Another thing is like, I plan to use certain money that I had saved up to purchase a home. Well, when I made this drastic decision that, not drastic, but when I made this decision to leave my job, now I had to use that money to sustain in the time that I wasn't working because remember, it ended up being way longer. So you just have to be flexible. You have to be flexible and know that you know what, this is going to come together. Like there were many times where I was concerned and I was worried, but God has provided for me, I have been provided for, and I am so thankful. The next thing that I think is so important in building this life that you love, and like I said, it's gonna hurt y'all, but you gotta distance yourself from people, from situations, and it's not even like in a nasty way, but it's like, 
you're not going to be able to attend every single event probably that you used to attend before you were just on this grind and on this focus for yourself. And when I say even on this focus, I'm not only relating this focus to career. I'm talking about everything, like full spectrum. When you even just think about like, for instance, for me, I wasn't dating anymore. I literally cut off dating. I'm like, you know what? I think for me, I'm one of those people where I'm like, well, I gotta get my money right before I feel comfortable wanting to date someone. But I just knew that I was so focused on getting this job in corporate that I didn't have the time to really give to someone else the way that would have been appropriate or like the way that I would wanna pour into someone. So like, let me just focus on this. And I, another thing is like, I did not wanna be distracted by a man. Sometimes men and women can distract us from the things that we're doing. And so you could be doing well, just doing you, and then you end up interacting with someone and it kind of like derails things. So I was like, you know what? I need to take a break from dealing with guys for a while while I'm on this journey. And you gotta be okay with that. The other thing is going out. I am definitely a social person, but I put that on pause. I have been missing in action. You know what I'm saying? Like people call me and ask me like, girl, you okay? Like everything all right, you know what I'm saying? Cause we haven't seen you in a while. You've really been missing. And I just have to let them know, you know, what I'm working on right now, it's, it's taking my undivided attention. And because I'm also just working on my, my mental strength and everything, like it, it's taking a lot from me. So I just, I don't have the time to be out. I don't have the time to socialize the same way that I used to. And sometimes I don't even want to. Like, I'll, I'm like, no, I could actually be doing something else because when you think about it, when you're building this life you love, the life that I see for myself where I have this flexibility to travel and do the things that I really want to do, I'm gonna have to work for it. I, I'm gonna have to work for it. And so if that's what I really want and I want to be on the beach, like typing on my laptop, sending messages and stuff like that, then I'm not going to be able to be out and about the way that I used to be. And so you have to make choices and you have to make decisions for the things that you really want in your life. The next thing is that you have got to pour into yourself. When I was just talking earlier about how it hurts, that's why you have to be pouring into yourself at the same time. I had not been to the library in probably a year and a half, which is crazy. I'm going back to the library now. I got Libby on my phone. Um, so I do audio books, but then I have like book books, um, actual copies of books that I'm reading. Then I read books um, through the app and everything like that. Like you have to be feeding your mind. That's pouring into yourself. The other thing of pouring into yourself is your level of self-care for yourself. My level of self-care has increased so much because I know like, no matter what I have going on in my life, I've got to do things for myself. That just means like taking long baths, like lighting those candles, relaxing, laying back, putting my head on a pillow, enjoying myself. If it means for you that you're going to the spa, that you're getting a facial, or that you're just walking in a park, you know, exercising, things that pour into you. That is gonna be a big part of your journey when you are building the life that you love because you need things that are going to help sustain you. And so for me, those are the things that help sustain me, even just like cooking more. I have been really on this tip of like wanting to cook more, wanting to just try different recipes, especially stuff that's like a lot healthier and everything. And it takes time to kind of like go through, research the recipes you wanna do. There are things that, yes, I have staples. Like, okay, I know how to make this. I can do that in my sleep. But I wanna be able to eat things that are going to be better for me, that are going to help me long term. So I'm putting effort into that. Just like house organization. I never thought that I would find joy in just like organizing things around my home. Yes, I do. So I'm pouring into myself all also so that this life that I'm building for myself, when other people come into my life, they'll be able to see how much I care about myself, how much I love myself, and they'll understand that I don't accept anything less than that standard. They're not gonna be able to come around here and treat me any type of way because this is already the level um, that I'm treating myself. Something else that has really helped me to be more focused during this time is putting my phone in work mode. I have never done that before. Like I will definitely text the heck out of some of my friends throughout the day. 
And so now I'm starting to put my phone in work mode while I'm working. I also pull up this like jazz cafe on my monitor and I'm like looking at that, listening to that while I'm working and it really does help me to be calm. Um, it helps me to stay focused during the time that I'm working on a specific task. Now keep in mind, it can't be all work and no play. I don't want you guys to think that that's, that's what I'm saying. You still have to have times where you are hanging out with your friends, hanging out with your family, doing other things, not just 100% focusing on building this life. You definitely, definitely have to have downtime. Okay, so the next tip that I wanna tell you all about is tracking your progress. One of the things that I think I have on my vision board is that you have to celebrate the small steps, right? Sometimes we are so focused on looking for this one big thing, like say you wanna buy a house, right? Until you get to purchasing the home, that's the only thing that you're thinking about. Whereas what you should give yourself credit for is like saving for the house, getting the real estate agent, starting to look for a home, having your credit together so that you can actually purchase and close on that home. Celebrate the small steps because it takes a while to get to that major milestone and you have to have momentum. So when you're celebrating the small steps, you're essentially giving yourself that extra momentum that you need. So that's what I do for myself. Even today, a small step for me is like, I sat down and I filmed a video. I have two businesses of my own. I'm tired. I have to tell myself and I have to motivate myself, okay, keep going. Like this is something that you know that not only are you passionate about, but that you can really grow into an amazing business, but you can't do that if you don't actually post content. But then I also have my hands in these other things, so I'm trying to like diversify my income. It's a lot, y'all. Whatever it is that you're doing, whatever that goal is, make sure that you are giving yourself credit for the small steps. All right, so I wanna ask you guys, what do you think is holding you back right now from building the life that you love? What is that thing that's stopping you from making the changes? And the other thing that I just wanna focus on y'all is that Yes, it gets difficult. Like I said, I had a rough day today. I did, but we have to keep going. And I think it's also important to make sure that you have some type of support system in place. I think that it's really important for you to have people that you can confide in when challenging times get difficult so that you have people that you can rely on, people that you can talk to, people who you can share your experiences with that are not gonna necessarily be super judgmental to you, but just actually listening to the things that you're saying. And then you have to be a support system too for yourself. I know that sounds crazy, but sometimes I realize when I go through these things that maybe it's nice that I have this channel, that I have this way of like talking to other people because I'm talking to y'all right now. I haven't shared this with anyone today. My mother witnessed it, but I didn't reach out to any of my friends and call them and say, hey, I'm having a rough moment. I'm talking about it right now and I'm getting it out and maybe for you it's different. Maybe you're not going to film a video to talk about it. Maybe you're going to write in your journal. Maybe you're just going to talk to yourself about it. But it definitely is important to get it out, to process it, and then to move on so that you can keep going and just understand that this journey of creating this life that you love is not an easy one and that not only are you creating a life you love, but you're creating, you're creating each day that you love, right? So instead of having this idea of I'm building and building and building and getting to this one end point, how can you actually love each moment that you're in now? How can you get to the point where you're loving each day and you're walking away from each day like, wow, I'm, I'm thankful for this. I'm happy that I do have this, this, and this. Sometimes we're always looking at the things that we don't have and we need to focus on the things that we do have. So thank you so much for watching this video. It's your girl, Nia Olivia. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. You can check out some of my other videos right here. Be blessed.